Good morning, good morning, good morning. Thank you uh, for joining uh, me today. Uh, first of all, um, my family and I continue to be overwhelmed um, by the display of love and support uh, from our community during the transition of my father, Van R. Johnson Sr. And I am so appreciative of every expression, every thought, every prayer, every kind word. Uh, and I especially thank my colleagues on council and also from Team Savannah who surprised me with the trip from uh, Savannah to New York for my father's homegrown celebration um, last Saturday. Uh, this continues to be a difficult time for me personally as is for everyone who has walked this journey. Uh, so I am adjusting uh, to my new life as a big boy. And so I appreciate your understanding and patience as I navigate this new world reality, uh, take care of myself and my family, and may be a little less visible uh, for a while until I get a chance to figure all this stuff out. But thank you all so much for for your kindness. I'm also grateful that as it appears that we will thaw out a little bit this week uh, from some below average temperatures that gripped the country last week, we are blessed to have a community and partners that continue to provide heating centers so that all of our residents have an opportunity to be in a warm place to stay during inclement weather. And I'm glad that the city of Savannah is part and parcel to those partnerships. Um, we recognize we have a responsibility to everyone. And so I specifically also want to thank the Chatham Savannah Authority for the Homeless, uh, Union Mission, Salvation Army, the old Savannah City Mission, Inner City Night Shelter, um, the House of Freedom Worship Center of Savannah, uh, and many other partners for their kindness and their generosity. Um, for making sure that in these times um, that folks have a chance to be warm. That's important to us. It is a part of equity. More importantly, it's a part of caring. So uh, thank you to everyone. I'm also happy to announce that uh, Savannah will again play host to a world-class marathon. Uh, the city of Savannah will host the Every Women's Marathon on November the 16th, 2024. This is an incredible event designed by women for women and the men who love them and like to be around them. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's for women, but it's not at the exclusion of anyone. Uh, more than just a race, uh, it, it does some things that were very important to us. It is a community-driven initiative organized by the nonprofit Milk. Many of you remember Milk, if you're old enough to remember the Milk, you know, Milk does the body good, the Milk mustaches, which is dedicated to nutrition and women's empowerment, which is important to us here in Savannah. Uh, following the last marathon, and you know at some point, uh, it started off really, really well, and then it became more of a, of a challenge than it was a joy. We intentionally decided um, that we were pausing on hosting anymore. As you know, um, it might have been a controversial decision, but in my mind, it was the right decision to make. Um, the previous marathon um, had, had lost its initial way with us, uh, and so for us, we decided we were not going to host any more marathons until um, it really regained the flavor of where we were before. Um, we wanted to reevaluate what Savannah looked like um, and make sure that if we have an event, it is a race um, that fits our city but also respects our city. Uh, understanding very real and clear that Savannah is a place to live first. Savannah is a place to live first then it's a place to visit. And so we wanted to make sure we had an event um, that carried that mantra. And so the Every Women's Marathon uh, fits that criteria. This is a marathon that is the first of its type uh, in this country. This is a meaningful, high intensity, low impact, community minded event with limited disruptions, uh, to the businesses and residents in the route. And I want to make sure 
that we were very, very clear from the very beginning um, that unless they met our high water marks, it wasn't going to happen here. And so for us, that was very, very important. I will tell you that the folks from um, Milk uh, have, have really met all of our requirements. We're not paying to have this marathon here as we did in the past. This is something that is value added for our community and again, minimally disruptive uh, for our citizens. Um, Milk will be announcing a major community uh, benefit structure, uh, donations to local organizations and meaningful engagement efforts. Again, if they're coming here, we want them to leave something here. And so, um, you know, we have some great nonprofits. Uh, the Girl Scouts of Historic Georgia, um, up to, uh, this is uh, donations to five charity partners, uh, up to $200,000 a piece. So significant. The Girl Scouts of Historic Georgia, Black Girls Run, uh, 261 Fearless, Girls on the Run, and of course, St. Jude, Children's Research Hospital. In addition, the Every Woman's Marathon will also be supporting an internship uh, at the Savannah State University for their students. And they will be making a donation to the historic Savannah Foundation. Again, um, we did not want to be taken advantage of anymore. We're not going to be taken advantage of anymore. Um, and so they have certainly met uh, our requirements. So we're still working on the exact route, um, and so we are taking into consideration um, the, the challenges, the advantages of, of, of certain routes as opposed to another. Uh, we are continually working closely with race organizers to reduce the most disruptive impacts experienced during other marathons. We know that Bay Street will reopen by 9 o'clock a.m., uh, we know that runners will be clear of the historic district by 10 o'clock a.m. on a race day. This is a 26-mile uh, marathon. There are no half marathons, 5Ks, or anything associated with it. These are real runners. And so um, we expect the race to be pretty swift. It will move pretty well, and we'll be able to open up the city uh, quickly. In addition, something that is very important to us, um, we won't be towing vehicles because it's important for folks to have a place to park, and you know parking in Savannah is a challenge. And the end of the route um, will be celebrated on private property, uh, and that will be at the trustee's garden. So uh, the difference, again, before it was Foresight Park, as you know, it was very disruptive to residents and businesses around Foresight Park. Um, they heard us, and they will celebrate it on private property at trustee's garden. Uh, the race will focus north of Foresight so that it does not interrupt the Foresight uh, farmer's market. Again, very important resource for our community. Uh, so we've heard from so many residents about the impact of other marathons in this community, and as I promised, we have listened. We are a world-class city. Uh, we deserve world-class events but not at the expense of residents and businesses. Again, we are a city where people live, um, and we wanted to make sure we kept that in mind. So I believe that the Airy Women's Marathon strikes a balance of these things, and I hope that you will join us in welcoming our partners of Milk to the host of city uh, in the coming months. And we're excited about this event. We are thankful and supportive to our friends at Visit Savannah and uh, the Savannah Chamber of Commerce. Um, this has been an all-hands-on team effort. Uh, Joe Marinelli is here from Visit Savannah. Um, and we've made it very clear, there's no contract. Uh, if they perform, we could talk about it next year. Um, but the reality is they have to perform and, and do the things they said they're going to do. And I have every, every assurance um, that they're going to do exactly what they said they were going to do. So more coming about that. Um, we're looking forward to the Every Women's Marathon. Uh, and Jay Melder and I will be running in that marathon while well, I'll be driving in a car behind Jay Melder. Uh, earlier this month, as you know, uh, council unanimously passed approval of the installation of a marker in the new Taylor Square. 
Uh, this will be an historic day, not only for Savannah, um, but for the entire nation as we continually learn more and consider the impacts and the legacy of Susie King Taylor, uh, a woman of color uh, and a formerly enslaved person who will have her name um, emboldened and inscribed on a historic Savannah Square. So I'm reminding everyone that February the 10th, beginning at 11 o'clock a.m., uh, the city of Savannah will host an epic event. We wanted it to be large. We wanted it to be, be huge. We wanted it to be awesome um, to mark this historic event. And so we will speak, we will dance, we will sing, uh, and we will unveil this sign um, to be able to say that the lives of formerly enslaved people the lives of women, the lives of those of color matter in this city. And there is no higher honor that we can give um, by naming this square. And so we have a lot in store for this uh, community on February 10th. And we're going to be joined by wonderful people um, that not only have worked so hard, but uh, for many people who don't know, Susie King Taylor was from Liberty County. And so we're looking forward to having folks from Liberty County. Again, this is a regional celebration. It's a national celebration. So um, we will be closing the streets around Taylor Square. Um, we want to make sure that this square uh, receives the attention that it deserves. A lot of people in their lifetime has never had the opportunity to witness um, the dedication of a historic Savannah Square. And this, under my administration, this will be the second. Yamacross Square and now Susie King Taylor Square. Equity has to be real and it has to be meaningful and it has to be demonstrative and we will be doing that. So looking forward to that great day in our city's history. Uh, the remaining portion of the dedication ceremony will run from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And then later on that evening at 6 p.m., we'll have more special events. This is a family event, and we're asking folks to come out uh, and enjoy with us. This will be another great day uh, in the city of Savannah. On Thursday, um, I'm happy to uh, partner with Amazon and a local nonprofit, One Seed, to bless several local elementary schools uh, with school supplies. Um, we know that at the beginning of school, everyone has school supplies. Everybody's giving school supplies. Well, those school supplies are, are tangible and, and they go away, they get used. Um, and so I've been working with Amazon to create an opportunity for us to make sure that those who particularly cannot afford it have the opportunity to receive school supplies. And so we're donating the supplies directly uh, to four schools in our community, four opportunity schools, uh, Gadsden Elementary, A.B. Williams Elementary, Otis Brock Elementary, and Haven Elementary to do, um, to to give school supplies to these schools that have deserving young people who may not have the financial means to secure school supplies for their children. So more information will be released later today about where we will be and what time, and we hope that you will, you will join us. On uh, Thursday, also the City Council will hold our second meeting of the 140th administration and of this new term. Uh, we will start with workshops at 11 o'clock a.m., which will be executive sessions uh, regarding personnel, real estate, and litigation. Uh, later on, we'll have an update from the city manager and review the agenda. At 2 o'clock p.m., we will open the regular meeting with a presentation. As you know, we partner with the Savannah Interagency Diversity Council. Uh, they will receive a proclamation declaring January as Human Trafficking Awareness Month. And they will also be talking about Traffic Jam, which is happening this weekend um, at Savannah State University. We will also have an appearance and recognition of the City Manager's second Emerging Leaders Academy participants. Uh, following the presentations, we will get down to business uh, for the day. We have four alcohol license hearings and a second reading of two ordinances. Uh, two weeks ago, you remember, we heard from residents for and against the rezoning of land on Burkhalter Road and an amendment to the future land use map. 
Um, we've heard the public, and so now it's time for council to vote, one way or another, and so um, that will happen on Thursday. We have six purchasing items, three resolutions, as well as a new agreement uh, for the approval of water and sewer. Uh, in those resolutions, I will be asking the City Council to approve a resolution requesting the Georgia Legislature to protect the Okefenokee Swamp, which is a unique Georgia treasure and an irreplaceable natural resource in Southeast Georgia. This natural treasure is one of North America's largest freshwater wetlands and home to more than 1,000 species of birds, reptiles, fish, man mammals, plants, and more. Now, we know the Okefenokee Swamp is not in Savannah. Uh, it's in South Georgia. However, if the city of Savannah is going to lead in climate and resiliency and environment, we're going to lead. And so it's close enough for us that the city of Savannah needs to weigh in and make sure that we are um, preempting mining activities on our precious natural resources. Um, so um, I'm hoping the council will approve this in the affirmative so that we can send it on to our delegation. Lastly, we will look at three real estate items, a settlement from the city attorney, and approval of a new subdivision. Uh, to find the full agenda for Thursday's meeting, you can visit savannahga.gov. You can also watch the meetings live on our Facebook page and, of course, on our award-winning SGTV. The meeting will also be streamed live at savannahga.gov. And, of course, everyone is always welcome to join us here in person in council chambers. Tomorrow, uh, we have a special event uh, north of the... Uh, mainland city of Savannah uh, in the Highlands and we will cut the ribbon on the first phase of the new Highlands Park at 2 o'clock p.m. The first phase includes uh, five-eighths of a mile of fully cemented and lighted walking trails with four benches and this is the first part of a larger project that will provide a uh, recreation destination for the growing community around it. Uh, we have promised this community um, they are the city of Savannah. They pay city of Savannah taxes. They're entitled to the amenities that the city of Savannah residents enjoy. And so we're delivering on that. And I promised that when I was first district alderman, and I'm delivering on that as mayor. And so I thank Team Savannah uh, for continuing um, that commitment to equity uh, throughout our city. So we hope everyone will join us at Wednesday, that's tomorrow at 2 p.m. at Highlands Park, located at 137 Shell Bark Way, 137 Shell Bark Way. Um, so that ends my prepared remarks, and I'll entertain any questions you may have. Good morning, Mr. Mayor. Good morning, sir. Um, I want to get back a little bit to this uh, marathon that's coming. You talked about. How did I know that? <laughs> uh, you talked about did they did they met the criteria? Can you maybe maybe expand on that a little bit about what that criteria was that y'all were looking for? Well, I'll be more specific. Um, you know, I was around and the only council member I think that was around when we started the rock and roll marathon. Um, the initial organizers, who happened to be the organizers. Uh, of milk, um, were very community engaged, very city engaged. Um, they were interested in giving more than they took, um, and that fit into what we were doing. Um, as the event went on, um, as the ownership of the it changed, it really became like we felt like we were a means to an end. And it become, became much more profit-driven. Uh, and in my mind, it just was not what we initially signed up for. Um, we want to make sure that we respect the fact that people live in the city of Savannah. And so we want people to visit. We want them to enjoy. Our city obviously helps feed our economy, which is important. It helps feed our tourism economy, which is important. But people live here. And so you know, we have to be able to consider the folks that live here and do business here that you know they, their lives are impacted by the things we do and so um, 
my my assistance and certainly my conversations with the city manager and team Savannah was that if that wasn't the major consideration, then I'm not entertaining it. And um, the other thing was that this is the Rock and Roll Marathon is as highest was probably about 20, 21,000 runners. This is maybe 5,000. So again, it's maybe um, a fourth of what it was before. So again, um, and then the Rock and Roll Marathon had, you know, 5K and it had a half marathon. So it was really people of different um, abilities which really dragged it out. And so we found that our city at its core was really disruptive for a large part of the day. Public transportation, which people rely on, was impacted um, because buses just couldn't get through. This is a much smaller event. Um, although it's a full marathon, it's a qualifier event for women. Um, but I, I suspect that it will move a lot faster um, and it will allow us to be able to open streets much faster. And again, um, they have really worked hard to be able to make the community better than they found it. And so the donations to some very deserving nonprofits, um, the internship at Savannah State to help um, a young person learn about event management in that way, um, their willingness to um, work with us to talk about the importance of milk. Milk still is important. Um, and so um, I think this really hit where we were trying to go. And so, um, you know, I was supportive of their efforts. Um, we've communicated to council, we've communicated um, with our neighborhood presidents, because again, we, we want to plan with them, and so we want to make sure they were very clear about where we are. And this is a part of a much larger planning process in which we're communicating, which is why um, we're not re releasing the route yet. We're still weighing pros and cons. How can we cause minimal disruption to people's lives? Morning. Good morning. Um, I wanted to ask you about the uh, public hearing at last uh, or two weeks ago's meeting uh, regarding the Buck Halter potential rezoning. A, a lot of emotional um, debate on both sides. Um, what did you make of it, and where do you stand on the issue? Um, a couple of things. I think that you know we wanted to take the time to hear people out. Um, the reality is that they're not our residents, but they are impacted by the things that they do, that we do. So they're stakeholders, so to me they're important. Um, we wanted to hear them. Um, and I think there are valid arguments on both sides. Um, when you're talking about people's home and homestead and the land and their neighborhoods around them, um, that is an emotional issue. And so I, I, I hope the council heard them out. Um, we received a lot of calls about it. Um, and I reserve the right to continue to um, read um, what's been sent, read the public record, um, certainly to uh, com continue to communicate with the city manager and staff um, about their professional thoughts regarding this, and then the council will, will, will make a decision. Um, but again, I can see valid arguments on both sides. Um, of, of why, but ultimately the council uh, is empowered to make a decision, and so we're going to make a decision on Thursday. Hello. Um, in regards to the Fairway Oaks, Edgemere, Sackville noise complaints coming from Truman Parkway, are you aware of those? And, yes. Um, what do you have to say to those residents who are concerned about no sound wall being there and a sound study I know is being worked on? Well, I think, um, well, first of all, I'm very aware of it. Um, obviously, we remain in constant communication with our neighbors. We recognize that um, when the the thought of the Truman Parkway was going up. It was really about moving people much quicker. Uh, for those who are not here, we remember what life was like in Savannah. I know Ricardo does before um, the Truman Parkway and Veterans Parkway. And you had to literally drive through city streets. Um, in creating that convenience, um, it has also impacted people. Uh, and there is a demonstrable sound impact uh, from cars that are whizzing through. Um, and so uh, the reason why we have the sound study going on is because we heard the residents. Um, but we also recognize that 
you have to have the engineering work done. And so the sound study is being taken place because we recognize that any fix, any solutions have to be um, from the scientific space. And so um, I, I hope the residents recognize that we do hear them um, and we continue to hear them. Um, but we want a scientific solution and not a political solution. Um, you know, not only issues of a wall, but, you know, the size wall, type of wall, how does that work, how far does the wall go, all of those things are, are decisions, and ultimately, how do we pay for it? And so, um, but we're committed to, um, to address the issue. Again, um, my deal with Savannah this term is about livability. We want people to be very comfortable in their investments in the city of Savannah. And so we want to minimize uh, the detrimental impacts uh, for people living in the city of Savannah. So uh, we heard them, uh, and I think that we're moving diligently, uh, and it's, it's top of mind for the city manager. Right? See? Morning, Mr. Mayor. Good morning. Um, so I'm just curious, you know, what kind of planning work have y'all already done that enables y'all to ensure the, that runners will be off of bay by 9 a.m. and clear the historic district by 10? Well, event management, and again, the benefit of this is that we have um, race organizers that know our city. They did the Rock and Roll Marathon here in Savannah initially. So they understand uh, the city. Um, they understand the runners. They understand the pace of runners. Um, even in my uneducated mind as it relates to race events, I knew that um, the, the, the real, true, serious run, marathon runners, they were gone. And for the record, I think I've done three rock and roll marathons, three or four. I had the medals. Um, I did halves. I did two halves, I think, and two 5Ks. It took me much longer and probably the reason why the streets probably weren't cleared as quickly was because they were waiting for me to move my behind out of the crosswalks. Um, but and when you have serious runners, they're trying to make time. And so they're moving. It's a fast-moving race. And so um, it's a science. Um, they can anticipate the number of runners, the pace that they're running, um, the speed that they're running to be able to reasonably be able to tell um, when the first runner is going to come across the finish line, uh, when the last runner is going to come out of the finish line. And so um, we have the benefit of their experience. And so because they also know Savannah uh, and because we have the expertise of event management here in Savannah, we, we realize that um, after an hour, um, nobody that's running this marathon Marathon, that's serious about running this marathon, is going to be uh, on Bay Street. Now, I might still be around, but everybody else is going to be gone. Yes, okay. Well, thank you all so much again. Um, thank you for your patience with me. Uh, do we have anything from Facebook? How do you know? You didn't even look. Okay. <laughs> Uh, glad to have our folks from Facebook Live, Mayor Johnson, SAV, uh, on with us. And certainly this is our uh, opportunity to be communicative, and we will continue to do so. I want to thank our Office of um, Marketing and Public Communications. Um, we want to continue to make sure that we stay in contact with all of you uh, as we go through this new year. So thank you all. Thank you for being Savannah Strong.